Welcome to section 12 of Fungi. This is our Fungi Overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Pneumocystis girovici, which you can see right here. This scene takes place in the modern world where superheroes protect civilization from harm. As you can see, our hero that we'll call Super Guy is front and center fighting off a villain, which we'll get to in a second. The word hero sounds kind of like Giro or Girovecci, which should help you remember that this image is all about Pneumocystis Girovecci. In the background, we've shown some thug kids having a good time and enjoying the epic superhero fight. One of these guys is holding a mug of yeast beer that's foaming at the brim. This is a reference to yeast and is here to help you remember that Pneumocystis Girovecci is a yeast-like fungus. Pneumocystis has a pretty complicated life cycle and morphology that's not fully understood. Unlike most fungi that assume a mold or yeast form, Pneumocystis has what's known as a trophic form and a cyst form. When viewed under the microscope, the cysts resemble yeast, so this is why it's called a yeast-like fungus. The exact life cycle and morphology of the organism is likely beyond the scope of step one, so just know that it's a yeast-like fungus. Now we can see some shady behavior a bit closer to Superguy. If you look closely, you can see that a drug dealer is giving this guy drugs in exchange for money on a plate. The plate is a reference to the disc-shaped cysts, and the silver is a reference to the methenamine silver stain. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that pneumocystis exhibits disc-shaped cysts that can be identified using the methenamine silver stain. This is a silver stain of pneumocystis girovecci cysts. As you can see, the cysts look like little yeast cells. For example, right here, it looks like these cysts could be potentially budding yeast. All right, if we look back at the thug bystanders, you can see that they're having a pretty good time. One of them is listening to music and enjoying his yeast beer, and the other is smiling and has his thumb up. The thumb up and happy appearance of these two is a reference to the idea that most pneumocystis giovecci infections are asymptomatic. The patients who typically develop symptoms are those who are immunocompromised. To help you remember this, we've shown a person in a stretcher, which is our recurring symbol for a compromised immune system. This guy in the stretcher is a deputy and was here fighting off the villain but became injured during the fight. Luckily for him, he's in good hands. You can see that the guy helping him has a bag full of band-aids and medical supplies. The band-aid is a reference to AIDS. Also notice that they're both directly below a building that says Max Occupancy 200. This is here to make you think of a CD4 count of 200. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that AIDS patients with a CD4 count less than 200 are at an increased risk of disease. It should logically follow then that these patients are prophylactically treated at this CD4 count, which is exactly the case. All right, now you can see that we've added the villain to the scene. This guy was trying to rob the bank across the street with an ax when he encountered the deputy. Luckily, super guy showed up and is now using his special water eyes to blast the axe away. Now we can see the axe crashing into the glass window and glass is shattering on to the ground. Anyway, the axe looks like a pair of lungs, which should make you think of pneumonia. The diffuse cracked glass should make you think of an interstitial pneumonia, and the glass on the ground should make you think of ground glass opacities. So putting all these ideas together should help you remember that pneumocystis causes interstitial pneumonia with ground glass opacities seen on chest imaging. This is an image of two chest x-rays from two different patients with pneumocystis pneumonia. As you can see, both radiographs show diffuse enhancements with the characteristic ground glass appearance. You may have also noticed that the villain's axe is covered with little red spots. These are spots of blood from attacking other people, and they resemble pneumatoceles that may be seen on imaging. So imaging may reveal pneumatoceles. These are simply air-filled cavities present in the lung parenchyma. This is a CT image of pneumatoceles, as you can see, the patient has cystic air-filled cavities throughout the lungs, which are known as nematocils. You can see this quite well, for example, right here. The water that Superguy is spraying from his eyes is hitting the lung-shaped axe and should make you think of a bronchoalveolar lavage. This is a procedure in which fluid is squirted into the lungs and then collected for examination. So pneumocystis can be diagnosed by lung biopsy or bronchoalveolar lavage. In both instances, a sample of lung cells and surrounding debris is obtained, which can then be examined for a definitive diagnosis. One of the ways to examine the sample is by using PCR. To help you remember this, we've shown another superhero known as Supergirl, and she's here with her trusty chain weapon. The three-pronged chain is a recurring symbol for polymerase chain reaction, so pneumocystis can be diagnosed with PCR. Alternatively, a fluorescent antibody can be used. The arrow is our symbol for antibodies, and the fact that this is on fire should make you think of fluorescence. So you can see that we've added a third superhero to the scene who is shooting the axe with a fire arrow, and this is here to help you remember that pneumocystis can be diagnosed with a fluorescent antibody stain. This is an image of a fluorescent antibody stain. This isn't pneumocystis, but the idea is the same. The organism lights up as a bright fluorescent color against a black background. All right, let's move on to discuss treatment. If we zoom back up on the drug dealer, we can see that he's passing out some crystal meth in exchange for payment. 
This is our recurring symbol for TMP-SMX and should help you remember that first line treatment in prophylaxis is TMP-SMX. As I mentioned earlier, prophylaxis is given when the CD4 count drops below 200. Also, remember the deputy on the stretcher? Deputy sounds like Dapsone and is our symbol for this drug. So an alternative prophylactic medication that can be used is Dapsone. Now we've shown some kids on the crosswalk in the background. Let's zoom up on them so you can see things better. First, notice that the person helping these kids is holding up a sign with five sides. So it's a pentagon. Pentagon sounds like pentamidine and is here to help you remember that pentamidine can also be used. Finally, notice that as the kids were cheering on the superheroes, one of them accidentally dropped an ice cream cone on his toe. Toe cone sounds like atovaquone and is here to help you remember that atovaquone can also be used. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 27-year-old male comes to the emergency department due to a cough and shortness of breath. He states that the cough has been present for one week, but the shortness of breath began earlier today. He has a history of HIV and has been non-compliant with antiretroviral therapy. A bronchoalveolar lavage is performed and a silver stain of the sample is shown below. Which of the following is most likely true regarding this patient's condition? A. TMP-SMX prophylaxis should be started when the CD4 count drops to less than 500. B. Most infections by the causal organism result in interstitial pneumonia. C. Cystic air-filled lesions in the lungs may be seen on imaging. Or D. An alternative prophylactic medication is chloroquine. Okay, hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient has a cough, shortness of breath, and a history of HIV. This, along with the silver stain, which shows cysts that resemble yeast cells, should make you think of pneumocystis girovecci. So in the image, you can see the cysts quite well, for example, right here. So with this in mind, the correct answer is C. Cystic air-filled lesions in the lungs may be seen on imaging. This is describing nematoceles. From the image, recall that the villain's axe is covered with little red spots right here, and that these resemble nematoceles that may be seen on imaging. We covered this image earlier, but again, notice the cystic air-filled cavities throughout the lungs, for example, right here. A is wrong because while TMP-SMX prophylaxis is given to these patients, it's administered when the CD4 count drops to below 200, not 500. So A is incorrect. B is wrong because while pneumocystis does cause interstitial pneumonia, most infections are asymptomatic and do not actually cause pneumonia. Pneumonia is most often seen in immunocompromised individuals. So B is incorrect. D is wrong because this is a medication used for malaria, not pneumocystis prophylaxis. So D is incorrect. So again, the correct answer is C. Cystic air-filled lesions in the lungs may be seen on imaging. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know regarding pneumocystis girovecci.